Yeah, thanks, Mum. <laughs> See ya. Okay, so I was just on the phone to Mum. The really amazing thing is I just got the word that the NPR wedge tail has been has been approved by WA Poll, and that's because the guys in licensing are really good. Now I've got five camels up here, and I'm just going to pop out, grab them, and then keep getting on my way. All right. Today, Danny and I are putting a new tube in the Steiger so we can get it going and doing some rehab work. Now, we've had a couple of goes at this and I might have some footage of that stashed away somewhere. But last week, at the end of the week, we got a new tube in there, started pumping it up and then it went flop. It didn't go well. We've um, gotten another tube up and we've been kindly informed that you can get the orientation wrong with the tube. So now we're going to struggle and mess around and pull that back off and put the new one in the right direction. So we're going to get sweaty because it's only just starting to warm up. This week we're expecting highs of 42. So we're going to have some fun and yeah, see how much our muscles have rested over the weekend. All right, let's see if that works at all. Makes it easier. You're the star of the show now. At some point, we're going to do a video of um, doing a row. Because, yeah, people are interested. Also, should we've got you with the camel the other day as well. The camel? Yeah, you know the one we did at Parsons? Oh, yeah. But we've got to get you to show show everyone how to do a roof. <laughs> That'd be good. So we've got this gap down the bottom here, which gives us a little bit of room to move all the way around. We've got that flexibility. So we're going to uh, stuff around for a bit more. He's in. Get it up here, Danny. Get your uh, bar in. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, we should be able to um, rest easy on this one. Because now we're over the lip. You work yours. Big bar down the bottom. More spray, you reckon? Should be able to slip yours out. And clear. if we can pull yours. <laughs> So Danny's just pulling the valve out so we can remove that and then we can pull the tube itself out. So it's going to be a little bit of tricky stuff what we've got to do. We might even have to lower it again just to be able to get our arms in but we'll see how we go without it. But we're going to have a little bit of a struggle getting the inner tube out but that's um, just the way it is. A little bit <laughs> like pulling the guts out of a cow. <sighs> this smells better. So last week we wiped it out and we blew it out with a leaf blower because the vacuum cleaner was down in Bunbury where the planes are getting fixed. So we do that to make sure that we don't have any debris in there that's potentially going to rub on the tube and cause a, a puncture, a wear. We're pretty confident it was good, but now we've got the tools, it's heaps better to just do the job all the way. So I'm going to back that out and squeeze the tube in. He said, oh, if you give us a camera, I'll, I'll film up the farm and, you know, what we do down here, but you've got to edit it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on. Like, it's not that hard. You can get into it. 
but some people might be interested in what happens in the other half of the operation. Wonder if Rigby would be as good a screen. <laughs> All right, so here's our new tube, and I have been trying to put the camera in the shade, but I don't know if you really want to look at my back for 10 minutes while we struggle. Effectively, we are going to pull her open and see if we can work out the orientation. The valve is nearest to us, so we'll make sure that we've got the tube set up like that. The other thing we're told is instead of instead of putting that valve um, lock on there, to use a pair of vice grips because then it can pull through, but then when you're starting to put load on the tractor as it's driving, the slip that you can get between the tube and the tyre it'll just pull it back inside and you don't rip your valve off. We'll see how we go and um, that's all we can really do is see how we go. There's a fair bit of weight in these. It's a lot of posty bike tyres. So, Danny? That's our valve on this side, because that's obviously the other half. So you want to put him in with that facing us. Is that how we did it last time? Or are you not sure? Could have guessed that's what you'd say. <laughs> no, it's all right. Then shit, I didn't know. I didn't think about it. Um, so I'm going to, when we put it in, I'll get this in. I'll put this on just to hold it in place. Then we can get the vice grips, clamp it, and go from there, really. Gloves on, gloves off. You can see how you struggled last time. <laughs> Right, well that went a little bit easier than we expected. So close. So close. Done. And Danny shows you how it's done. I'll say that again. And Danny shows you how it's done. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll just grab Maud and grab the service trailer and I'll grab a vice grip. Okay, so Danny and I both went and just grabbed a drink and then we got the service trailer. So, down in here, we're following that advice that was to keep the valve lock, for want of a better word, off. So, I'm going to pull him 
off just there. Sorry, pull him off just there. And we're going to put, but we need to be able to get our valve clip onto it. Yeah, that'll work just like that. If we wanted this to go quicker, we could have just taken that valve core out. So we've just had the third arm hire. We, um, we called up Dad and asked him how it was done back in the day, if there are any other tips he remembered. And he said, once it's got enough air in to hold itself the valve out, take the vice grips off and then let it build up under our own pressure. Don't get too hung up on it making it all the way to the bead because you'll just pump some air in, get her up, drive her a little bit and keep putting the air in to build it up. So hopefully we will be rolling before lunchtime. Now we're not going to make you just sit there and watch us watch a tyre. So we'll pop back when we're doing something interesting or something bad has happened. All right, let's do the isolator and fire the Steiger up. All right, so we had a little bit of fun getting her started. Nothing mechanical, it was literally the key barrel was just a little bit seized up. So gave it a little bit of a work, like literally just jiggling it until it freed up and then she started just like a dream. So we've pulled her over near the house where we can put some water in. Because to get some extra weight on the machine so we can get maximum power and traction, we want it a bit of extra weight. So we're gonna whack it into it using water. So we're going to make up a little bit of an adapter for this. So we've got a three quarter hose, hose clamp, and we've got a bit of brake line here that we're gonna poke through to allow the air to come out as we put water into it. So, let's um, yeah, get started. I know there are tools out there for this. I should have ordered it, uh, but we're here now and we're gonna get the job done. Paramedic friends would be a little disappointed in me. It's not how you do a track yard with him. Is how you make a beer bong. <laughs> Tell you what, that bloody tray of that ute's pretty warm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's not tightening up very, really, really nicely. So I guess we're just going to turn it on and see what happens, Danny. <laughs> Got a bit stuck there, did you? Oh, yeah.
Yeah, let's flick him off for a sec, Danny, and I'll just see how much air pressure it built up. Alright, time to work him back on again. I had to duck home and sort out a bit of an issue with the toilet. The girls had just clogged it with toilet paper, so that was fun. Meanwhile, Danny's got it done. We've now got water in the bottom there, and we're just going to whack the compressor on, pump her up to 20 psi, and she's good to go out on the job. So we're actually going to do... Well, I've actually been thinking we're probably going to live stream it. So this will be sort of like the background to the live stream. And yeah, we're going to um, have some lunch, go for a drive and get started on rehab. Okay, so... Tires up, all good. Go to start it, no bingo. Tried filling with the key barrel, no bingo. So we're up to doing a bit of hot wiring. There's gonna be somewhere out, someone out there that knows these things in and out, and um, is gonna tell me that I've done it completely wrong. But let's see what we got. What's up, Penny? You done? You know those wires that we um, cut open and had a look at? The ones down here that we had? Yeah, they're just for the lights. <laughs> so, I'm now trying to get into the top to get to this key barrel to get to the wires because they run up inside. So, I'm, yeah, having a bit of fun. I've just got to work out if I can undo this unnecessary thing because... Do we need indicators out here, Danny? <laughs> okay, so we're on our way out to the rehab site. I got the ignition working. I had to take it apart. I did not video it. When we get a bit of time I'll jump in and I'll show you what happened and what I changed what I did and I really hope that someone does comment about how simple of a fix it could have been uh, by the time I worked out the system so yeah Danny is just cruising along behind me now and I'm just going out in front to mark the way to the site I've got my saw shovel pick yeah I do uh, to make sure that I can dig down and I'll explain it and we'll go through it but we are like I said earlier this is going to be a live stream and we won't have quite as much high resolution stuff but that's how it is and yeah it's always good to have live streams where we can engage directly with the audience as we work and yeah let's us answer the questions so, as I've been going along, I have seen a good number of camel tracks that have been since the rain. And, yeah, just last night, Danny got two camels. He got a couple of back straps off them, and he was pretty happy with that. So, now he's doing pretty well, and he's, at the moment, he's dropped five camels. He's ended up with a couple of small groups. But, the biggest thing is, Danny always takes a stake. It's, it's great. All right, so I'm just going to keep on cruising on, and if there's anything, there'll be something. Okay, so on the Steiger, originally, the key barrel was there, and I took that out, pulled all of this off to find out that there's a little rod that runs down the side here, and that rod went down to a little box, and then that little box literally is that, and you've got a slot there, that you can move over left and right to start the tractor. So you get something like a Leatherman or a Gerber and you can move it 
and you can start it. And that's it, that's your new ignition system. So that um, took me a few hours to work out, but we just relocated it, screwed it onto the dash here, and it works beautifully. No push rod to break, and you can always do it with any of your tools. Just grab out your flat blader and start her up. Easy as that. Yeah, thanks, Mum. <laughs> See ya. Okay, so I was just on the phone to mum. The really amazing thing is I just got the word that the NPR wedge tail has been has been approved by WA Pol, and that's because the guys in licensing are really good. Now I've got five camels up here and I'm just gonna pop out, grab them, and then keep getting on my way. But uh Big shout out to Clinton. Thanks for being my camel whisperer. I'm just gonna get stuck into these boys. I've got the bipod, I'm running ADI ammo, and I've got the three magazines. Thanks very much to Australian Sporting Agencies for getting that magazine to me so I can be effective. Okay, one out there. Empty.
Tell you what, that is one warm barrel. So that was pretty effective. That ADI ammo had zero issues. Those, that new magazine, brilliant. We're, we're onto it. So five down, yeah, the five of five. And um, while I'm here, just gonna point out one of the locations for shooting the camels that I found to be rather effective. Now, you could try and go for all your headshots, and that does pose a little bit of a risk. You know, I'm using a 308. We're not looking at too much risk with the wind out here. But a nice spot to drop a camel because you just drop them and then you can tidy them up as quickly as possible at the end is to get them just in the base of the neck here. Now, there is quite a bit of vertebrae there. You take that out, the animal's down. If you look at them from the front, go for this bit of a V here and in there, you take out the heart. If you're going for the big game heart shot, you're looking at just here. Now, people might be saying, oh, it's not so quick. They're dead. They're dead in the end, and they're dead pretty quickly. The heart shot, I've never seen them go more than 200 meters. So that's it, they're done. I've got the opportunity and time now to take some meat because Jasmine has said, if I come home without camel meat, She's going to be pretty annoyed because she wants steak. So, yeah, every camel that you don't get is a mistake. So, I'm going to get the knives out, find something to wrap it up in, get some meat. All right, sorry everyone, I was caught up a bit with the live stream. I've just gotten stuck into the first camel. So, what I covered off on the live stream was you know, that we take out the camels because they are a competitor to our livestock out here because its food is scarce. Also, they're a large threat to our water security, which means if we don't have water, we can't have cattle. <sighs> so, I'm onto some of these camels. They are females. They tend to have nicer meat, less, uh, less tough, really. So, I'm gonna get into it because Spent a bit of time on that live stream. And we've only got a small window to harvest the meat. So what I've done, taken one incision down there, one across, one down. I'm gonna take the skin off, then I'll get the fat out of the way, then I'll get into the back strap. So the fat is a very different color to most other fats. I mean, we're looking at a lactating cow here. If you're doing that on a beef cow, for want of a better word, a bovine, you would be expecting yellow fat. On the camels, it's this extremely clean, white looking fat. And my goal and intent at the moment is to fill that angle up. So 
so that we've got a decent amount of nice fresh mate at home. So working my way along here, I'm just going to try and separate the meat from the fat. So I'm just going along that membrane. So I'm just gonna pull this giant chunk of fat out, just so you can see it. in all its glory. Right, that is just fat. Cray bait, um, and also some people say really good to make dog baits with. All right, so I've gotten through the fat. Now I've got this large muscle to take out. Now I'll leave a bit of the fat on there because... Because we can't always trim it off. Sorry, it's a little bit windy at the moment. What it does is it gives us a little bit more protection. You can be a bridge. What do you do for anything that I don't extend it? And as I've said, I. I hate to see waste. A lot of people are going to make comments like, you know, why don't you just give it to the homeless or you know, send the meat over to Africa? I'd love to. We um, had a fair bit of involvement over the fair. Um, we've had some of my friends come over a couple of years. And I've seen this. They are astonished. Now, I don't want to try this. Okay, it looks like my microphone slipped out of the slot. So I'm not sure how much we missed there. Might be a bit difficult to see, but you can see there's a bit of dirt there. That's come off the hide. So that's why I like that fat on there, so I can just trim it off. Now, one of the other camels is just starting to molt, so I don't want to go for that one. You know, a little bit too much dirt for my liking. So, just gonna grab a couple others, and I'll jump back on in a second. All right, so I've grabbed the meat off those camels. It's in the angle, cooling down nicely. And, yeah, they um, were quickly dispatched which is nice, it's always good when everything runs smoothly like that. And it's much better for the animals as well. Yeah, so try to waste as little of it as I can. And if I had a dedicated setup like Ethan does, and you'll see that in the video where we talk about camel meat being a sustainable pet food, and that sort of setup, I'd be able to harvest a lot more. This is just my work cute, so she's not set up for it. We could get more meat off them. And you know, if you look at this, the amount of meat that I've just put there, that'd feed someone for quite, quite a long time. Um, it's just unfortunate the health food codes here in Western Australia don't allow the wild harvest of 
um, camel meat for any commercial purposes. You can only use it really for personal consumption. You can't then on sell it. The distance to market to get these camels alive to a processing centre is just cost prohibitive. It ends up costing the producer money to do that. And whilst we do want to see, um, we want to see people fed, there's a limit to how much we can do because we would have to redesign a reasonable amount of our equipment to be able to conduct that sort of operation. And yeah, that charity can only go so far. There's just no desire in the market for the camels. You know, there's a lot of people saying that, yep, we'd love to see them, we, you know, ship them over to us, but the willingness to pay is not there. So the most cost effective method to control the camels is just to shoot them and we use what we can. Right, gonna get ready for the rest of the day. Carry on, check in on Danny, see how he's going and yeah, sunny side up.